praise the Lord and once again gather us together in his name. We thank the Lord God for every brother and sisters that are here. Amen. Just to let you know once again as we were saying, y'all are important. Y'all are important, like it or not. You know, either way it goes, like somebody said, you can't stop me from loving you. Because my love comes from God. So, you know, you are important. We thank God for everyone that's here. We hope the Lord continues to bless you all. We thank the Lord God for everyone that prayed for us and prayed for everyone that's, you know, that's here and not here. Always keep everyone in prayer. Because everyone, Amen. like I say, everybody's in prayer. Everybody. It doesn't matter where you at, who you are. Everybody that's in the body of Christ is important. It doesn't matter what position you hold. It doesn't matter if you're at the top, you're at the bottom, you're the toe. You know I mean, you're, you're, you're the pinky. Everybody's in Every strip of the body's in Nobody's meant to be neglected. Nobody's meant to be looked down on. Everybody in the body of Christ is important. If you're in the body, you're important. Amen. So no matter what, we thank the Lord God for everyone that's here. We hope the Lord God bless everyone continue to be encouraged. Before we start, let's go into a little prayer. Oh, righteous Father, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, for allowing us to be here. We ask you, Lord God, that you bless us to be faithful. Lord God, that we continue to lean on you and trust you, Lord Jesus. Oh, Lord God, help our mind, Lord God, to be renewed in the right mind and the right spirit, Lord God. Give us the mind, Lord God, to do your will, Lord Jesus. Watch over us, guide us, Lord Jesus. Help us to navigate through this evil world, Lord God. Oh God, let us continue to lift up your name, Lord Jesus. Let us not turn back, Lord God, and not give up. Strengthen us, Lord God, to fight on, Lord Jesus. Strengthen us, Lord God, to be this light to this world, Lord Jesus. Touch us and Lord God, help us, Lord God, to hold on. Strengthen us when we're weak, Lord yes, Jesus. Lord. Oh Lord God, we want to give you glory and praise you, Lord. Oh God, help our life honor you, Lord God. The things that we do, Lord God, we want to give you the glory for it, Lord Jesus. Help our living won't be in vain, Lord Jesus. That everything we do, Lord God, is for you and the lifting of you and the kingdom of God, Lord Jesus. Help us, Lord God, to continue to be real with you and not be a hypocrite, Lord God. Hallelujah, Lord. Yes. Work on us, Lord God. Put your hand in our life and, Lord God, continue to God. Yes. We ask you, Lord God, that you bless everyone in the world. Yes. Amen. 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 We do thank the Lord God once again. We thank the Lord God for blessing us in the house of God. And once again, the Lord allows us to make it again. Amen. The Lord blessed us to see another day. And we are so grateful for it. We praise the Lord for continuing to pray for me. I the Lord continue to uh, encourage me in the way. And I hope the Lord continue to encourage you in the way. Yes. Thank the Lord for the gathering. So we're going to start off in the scripture. We're going to start off in the first scripture. We're going to start off with uh, the book of uh, the book of uh, Timothy. The book of Timothy. See, the book of Timothy beginning at... Uh, First Timothy, First Timothy, First Timothy, chapter four. 1 Timothy, chapter four, beginning at the first verse. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly. And the, the, the Spirit is speaking. Yes. This is the Spirit is speaking. Go ahead, read, read my book. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly mm -hmm. that in the latter time some shall depart from the faith. It's talking about in the last days, the time where it be, those that you see as regulars. Yes, Lord. Those who you thought was maybe be faithful. Those that you would have put your whole money on. It was on the way to heaven. He said, in the last days, these people here that we thought was going to endure to the end, something happened. Read it to my brother. What happened? Apart from the faith. They departed. Given he to the redeemed. They, they not only departed, they grabbed onto something Amen. to pull them out the way. Something 
something grabbed onto them and got their attention. Amen. Something that overtook them was they thought was powerful in God. That they allowed themselves to be pulled and be distracted and got off the road. Something interrupted their walk with God. Something happened to these people that was in the faith. That they departed. Amen. Where are you reading, my brother? Giving heed to seducing spirits. That's what it is. A spirit seduced. Amen. The spirit called them. The spirit found something to draw their attention. The spirit found something that can aggravate them enough that they can start looking towards the spirit. Mm -hmm. And it's not a good spirit, it's an evil spirit. Mm -hmm. It seduced them, it tricked them, it deceived them. And it had them so much caught up into it that they forgot the truth of God. Read my brother. Giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devil. It's all listen to the doctrine of devil. They start believing what the devil believed. The devil, the devil deceived them enough that they start believing what the devil believed. Don't you know the devil is a copier of a God? He's an imitator of God. He said, I, he, he, he tried to be exactly like God. So if he's trying to be like God, that means he got his own scriptures. He got his own scriptures. He got what scripture comes next to this scripture where he has some confusion where somebody read this and that like one thing and think another. He make you look at one thing you see. This is what it says. This is what it says. This is what it says. And he sit there and deceive you. He seduce you. He seduce you. Read on, my brother. Speaking lies and hypocrite, having their conscience sealed with a hot iron. Having their conscience sealed. That means their mind is stirring me up. No matter how much we talk, no matter how much truth you bring, their mind is made up. I'm going to them. I ain't not leaving them. I'm going on with them. No matter what, I am deceived. Not only deceived, I love it. Because they didn't love the truth. Hallelujah. Because they didn't want it to hear the truth, Amen. they allowed themselves to be deceived. Go ahead, my brother. But bidding to marry and commanded to obtain from meats. Which God has created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. For every creature of God is good and nothing to be refused. See, they start saying stuff that was given to God. God said, Man, you, you blessed that. That fool is blessed by God. So basically, it was saying things that were different from what God was teaching in the scripture. Amen. Basically, say you receive this. He also said in one scripture, Let nothing. That the Lord be that the Lord clean be called unclean. And so what is it is going against the scripture. Read it again, my brother. Well, every creature of God is good mm -hmm. and nothing to be refused. He said, every creature. You got that in a lot of people. You, you can't eat this, you can't eat that. But what the scripture said, every creature of God is one. It's good. So if you come against that, that means you're fighting against what the scripture said. Amen. You find in your script, you, you say, well, this is that, that, that. This is where God released all that stuff that was talking about in the Old Testament. See, he meant to use that for example. Amen. He meant to use that. He let the unclean be the point of example. Get away from that. Amen. But he turned around for something that was forbidden. Now he cleaned, he cleaned it. What he did, he took an unclean people. Amen. He took a forbidden people and cleaned them. And now that the thing that used to be unclean is cleaned by God. He used that for example. A lot of times things in the Old Testament, it was an example. Some of these things was an example of Christ. It's just an example. It wasn't for stuff to keep continuing to follow. It just was an example. Too many people are caught up in an example and not keep reading the scripture where God has showed you that was just a schoolmaster. Amen. That was just a tutor until Christ come. It was just something you can just read until the real thing come. It's just something you can understand. I'm going to give you this figure until the real thing come. You have the form, the shape, but you don't have the real thing. You just have the shadow of good things to come. You cannot hold a shadow. The shadow is just the thing that's coming. It's a form. Now Christ was come. The thing about the shadow came first. So all we have was the shadow, so we don't have the form. But now Christ is on the 
see. We don't have the shadow. We have, behold, the Lamb of God who take away the sins of the world. Now we got Christ. He's here. And he's bringing the word of truth to us. Read it, my brother. And nothing to be refused. Nothing to be refused. He received nothing. with thanksgiving. Nothing to be refused. Amen. If anybody say he's saying say nothing to be refused, this is the scriptures right here. Releasing all that stuff they say, you know, he just this is a clean. You, you can't. We ain't gonna get it. So you read the tip chapter. He said that. He said, No, eat, Lord, let's eat. Peter, eat. He said, Oh, no, 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 Lord, he can't eat what the eat. And the Lord cleansed that. He's trying to tell you that was just a shadow. It wasn't the real thing. But the thing about it I want you to look and focus to is what it said when it first starts speaking. And this is the problem between what's going on in the scripture what goes along with the people that departed. And it starts here. Start verse 1 again. Now the Spirit speaks expressly mm -hmm. that in the latter time some shall depart from the faith. See, you, you got the Spirit speaking and if you drop down, the doctors will tell. So you got the Spirit speaking, you got the devil speaking. So you have two conversations. You got the spirit speaking expressly. It's plain. And you can see it. You can understand. There's no deception. It's just straight up. There's nothing you need to dress up. There's nothing you need to put music to. It's just God word, period. It stands alone. Right. It's the spirit. It's speaking plainly to you. You don't need to say, I gotta figure this out. God is making it plain when anybody can understand it's him speaking. Amen. So you got the spirit speaking, not the devil speaking. So both of them are speaking to one of us in here. The question is, whose spirit are you listening to? When you go home, whose spirit are you listening to? What is the spirit that we're giving ourselves over to? What is the thing that has control of our emotions, our thoughts, what we're doing, what we're trying to make a decision? What spirit is guiding our life? What is the spirit that's talking to us? This spirit that is speaking plainly. Well, you can get it. No deception. Sometimes you gotta get us in devil. What you say? I don't understand. It's just a rabbit hole. It's trying to confuse you. You keep going and keep going, and then just leave you so far away from God, and you've been wondering, how did I get here? Amen. It all started with a thought. How did I get here? How did I get so far from God? How did I get here? But the spirit is like, I'm speaking plainly. You get it. The question is, the spirit is talking to us. It's talking to us right now. It's speaking to us. So we can't sit around and act like we don't hear him. The spirit is talking. We can't. He's saying plainly. As the devil speaks, he's out speaking plainly to you. Nobody can sit and say he can't say he heard him. He's speaking to us. So this is the problem what they had. They would listen to one spirit or the other. They would listen to one that spoke about the doctrine of the host. Or they listen to the spirit that speaks expressly. That's why the scripture say, listen to what the Spirit says to the church. The Spirit is speaking to the church. He's speaking to us right now. When you open up the scripture, God is speaking. He's speaking to you. He's talking to you. If you don't get it, keep reading. Keep reading. Those that desire wisdom, ask God, keep reading. Keep reading. He will talk to you. Just like the devil, he's talking. Somebody's talking to you. Somebody's in your ear. Somebody's trying to influence you. Which other spirit that you're giving into? Which other spirit spirits you're giving into? You sitting up there, you're listening to something. Something's talking to you. Something is saying to you. And it gets to a point where now, you know, you forget what was right. You forget to do the things that you know was right to you. And now he's getting you to say, I don't even worry about that right now. Don't worry about that now, now. I mean, God have mercy. Amen. <laughs> you, you got grace. And God don't understand. But that brings us to the point where it says something here. It's in Peter. Uh, uh, first Peter. <clears throat> first, no, second Peter. Second Peter chapter three. Second Peter chapter three, begin at verse three. Knowing this first, mm -hmm. that there shall come in the last days scoffers, mm -hmm. 
walking after their own lust. See, this is coming around, they're going to have people, especially sometimes people that's of God. They're not going to be found in the spirit. They're going to be guided by their own lust. Amen. And what they're going to do is they're going to try to influence you. They're going to try to talk to you. It's one thing I learned about the devil. If he can't get you directly, he gets you indirectly. Amen. See, I can't come to that way. Uh -huh. I come to your job. Uh -huh. I come to a family member. Okay. I come to your tragedy. Uh -huh. I come to your suffering. I come to your loss. I, I, I see it. I can't get you that way. But when you get in a situation, I know you're going to listen to me. Uh -huh. All he's doing, can I get your attention? Once I can get your attention, Amen. you're going to start listening to me. Amen. Right now, you're resisting me. Oh, yes. He knows that we know what we heard. He's the one that brought it to us. 
He didn't want to talk to directly to our heart. He knows we know what to do was right. Amen. Nobody has to tell us. We know. Nobody has to stand over you and tell you certain things to do it right or wrong. You know it. Yes. But we're going to say, I, 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 I can't quite see it. I can't quite see it. So he wants you relaxing because the Lord hasn't come yet. Amen. Give me my brother. That by the word of God, the heavens were of old, mm -hmm. and the earth standing out of the water and in the water. Whereby the world that then was being overflowed with water right. perished. Mm -hmm. But the heavens and the earth, which are now, by the same word, are kept in store. Don't you know it's the word that keeps this whole earth together? Amen. It's God's word. He said he spoke that was light. Amen. It's his word. That's the one that wants to God say, it's time. Yes. It's time. Christ is time. It's time. Christ, it's time to come. Nobody knows how I set my fault. It's time. Amen. It's kept by the word of God. Everything is all together. Even the last moment of earth hold together by God's word. All you have to do is speak right now. This is the time. Amen. This is the end time. This is it. This is it. I've been taking all this foolishness for long. I am done with it. I'm tired. I've been holding out. It's time. It's time. Amen. Read it, my brother. By the same word are kept in store, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and prediction of ungodly men. Read it. Keep reading, my brother. But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing. See? See how he's talking to you? He's talking to you for long. He's here for long. Read it, my brother. That one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. See, this is what God is trying to tell you. He said, the only reason I can't, I'm not coming back, I'm giving up this time. Amen. It's a long time for you, but for me, time is nothing. It's a long time. It's, it's, it seems like you did. They've been talking about so long. It's a reason why he didn't come. He's giving other people time to come in. Amen. That's why he hasn't came yet. He's giving the same opportunity that you have right here. Somebody's out there he's waiting on. It's, it seems like a long time to us. He should have been came in. It's been a long time. No, God not had to wait. Because why? He said, what, what did he say about time? That one day is with the Lord. As a thousand years, and a what? thousand years as one day. It's it's, it's nothing. Mm -hmm. We look at it, it's like I, you be saying, I should have been coming up. God know when your time was supposed to come in here. Amen. He know the perfect time. He know when to wait. He actually know how to put the scene together. He know when you was gonna come in. He know when you're gonna call in his name. He had everything all orchestrated together to say, This is your time. Amen. That's why he didn't come yet. He's waiting on somebody. He's waiting on somebody. The opportunity is given to everybody else. He's calling out for all the people to come in. That's why he hasn't came yet. All these people be saying, the Lord come. You don't know when he's going to come. No man knows the hour. Please stop listening to people. The book says this. I look at the calendar and the 14, 5,000 years, he's coming. No man knows the hour. Does that make the scripts alive? He knows exactly the time. Amen. We just know around the pout. Yeah. Just say that. I know around about. I see the time. I see it's coming close. I see how people act. I see the witness run. I see the hearts of many wax cold. I see it. it's time. But what I need to do is prepare for the end. I should prepare for the end. Now that you hear your saved, he's waiting on the others to come in. That's why he never came back. That's the only reason. He's holding the door open for somebody else. Before the door closes, he's holding the door open for somebody else. That's why. Keep reading, my brother. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise. As some men count slackness, but his long suffering to us. Brother. See? That's that. He's suffering long for the others to have him came in. Don't you know he suffered for us to come in? He had to deal with our disobedience. He had to deal with us acting up. He suffered long before we came in. He held the door open long enough for us to get in. He didn't shut it yet. He allowed you to come in here. Hallelujah. Do you understand? He allowed you to come in here. Amen. Don't you know? I think the scripture is saying the line got to go out. It said the word got to go. God got to talk to somebody. 
He's got to talk to somebody that's going to listen to him. Not the people that listen to the devil. His voice is going out. He's talking to somebody. Somebody else needs to be saved. Somebody else needs Jesus. It's not just us. Somebody else needs to be saved also. He's talking to somebody. That's why the door's still open. You know what the scary thing? He said to the, to the, to the gospel pre preach to all the creatures of the world. But imagine this. One of us that comes in, the last person may be the last creature. And when the last creature, the door shut. Ain't no more coming. You're the last one. The only one that hurts. The last one. Think about it. If, he, if the last one, when they come, is either they're going to accept it or they're going to reject it. Just imagine you stand before God to be the one say, I don't want him. I don't want no Christ. You'll be the last person to hear the gospel truth. You'll be the one to say, I don't want Jesus. You'll be the last one. But then after that, the door shut. The door shut. So you got to stand before God to show you he was the last person. Amen. He was the last person to accept the rejection. He was the last person to believe or have unbelief. The very last person. Amen. I hold that door open, but nobody that say Christ didn't come in their life. He said, I'm speaking to you. I'm speaking to you. I'm speaking to you to be seen. Nobody got an excuse. Nobody can hide. The word is going out there. He's speaking. He's talking right now. He's speaking. Every time you look around, he's speaking. He's dealing with somebody right now. He's talking to somebody. He's dealing with people. Right now, this is what he's dealing. Amen. How are we going to listen to the voice or are we just going to ignore him? Are we going to play with him? Amen. Who voice are we going to listen to? Do not be deceived by the devil. Do not be deceived by the devil. I keep saying it over and over again. He's not your friend. He's not your friend. Let me give, give you the book of Revelation. Revelation chapter 12. He's not your friend. He may pretend he's your friend. He's not your friend. He may feel like he's on your side. That's all deception. The scripture says he transformed himself on an angel of light. That's a deception. He's wearing a masquerade. He's wearing a mask to pretend that he's your friend, but he's not. He's trying to comfort you. He's trying to give you an easy way out. He's trying to tell you everything else. Anything else when he push you away from God, he's trying to get you from not praying. He's going to get you from not seeking. He's trying to get you from not opening the word. If I can get you to lean towards me Amen. and make you feel comfortable like I'm your friend. It says in the book of Revelation chapter 12, uh, verse 9. Let's talk about it. And the great dragon was cast out. That old serpent called the devil. The devil? I cast out and what happened? And Satan, which deceived the whole world, hmm. he was cast out into the earth. He was cast out into the earth. Deceived the whole world. Deception. That's his gift. Amen. He's real good at deception. What it said, my brother? And his angels were cast out with him. So you telling me, this is the thing about it. You telling me that the devil can't deceive. Powerful he is at deception. Amen. You see how powerful he is at deception? The scripture even say, if it be possible, the very elect is saying he's so strong, if it was possible, he can trick them too. But because God is keeping him, that's why he don't fall for it. Because they still read the truth. They're not falling for it. If it was possible, that's how powerful he is. Read my brother. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven. Now has come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God mm -hmm. and the power of his Christ for the accuser That's of, Keep reading. For the accuser of our brethren The accuser of the brethren is cast down. The accuser, that's what he do. He speaks against us. That's what he do. He's accuser of brethren. What he said? The accuser of our brethren uh -huh. is cast down uh -huh. Which has killed them before our God day and night. Day and night. He's talking about us before God day and night. Bringing accusations. He's bringing up accusations before God. Some of them may be true. Some of them may be true. But that's the thing about it. Even though he brings up truth, don't mean that you cannot change. Amen. The only time the lies of the devil becomes true when you start believing. 
No, you start trusting your lies. He's accusing you all the time. He's telling God, this is not about you. He's talking about you. And he's sitting there and he's trying to convince God, this is you. But don't you know when you walk in Christ, you can sit a new creature, you're a different person. He's trying to convince you that you can't change. Amen. He's accusing the person. He's just constantly accusing you. He's constantly talking about you. Be in your ear talking. And, it's, and I'm going to tell you, it'd be so amazing that some people listen to him. That's how you get on track. Yes. With his accusations that he, tell, he brings us, some people just listen. He's like, maybe you're right, y'all. Maybe you're right. Maybe the Lord don't hear me. Let me stop praying. Let me stop praying. I mean, you could be so close with God about to do something. And the devil come on. Stay in the room. Stop, stop that praying. He God in this city. He God in this city. Maybe you're right. And we listen to him. And we stop. And then all of a sudden, it's just hard to get back into that moment with talking to God. Because he lied. You got to be careful of the voice that you listen to in your life. That's right. Who's speaking to you right now? Yeah. Who are you listening? Who is in your ear? Because he's talking. He's talking. Yeah. You got Jesus talking, you got the devil talking. He's talking. He's talking. It says the spirit is speaking especially. Also the doctrine of the devil. All in the same paragraphs. He's speaking. He's talking. But what you need to do, you have to step back and evaluate this thing that's speaking to you. You have to do something. That's in the, uh, the, book, the book of John. First John. First John chapter 4. You have to do something about it. You have to do something about it as it's saying, listen, I'm not listening to you anymore, devil. Uh, 1 John chapter 4, beginning at verse 1. Beloved, mm -hmm. believe not every spirit. Exactly. That's what you do. Do not accept what he's telling you. Yeah. It's not accept what he's keep telling you. Don't believe everything that's come to you. Just don't accept everything that's being told to you. You just don't accept it because God said it. God said it. Wait, wait a minute. Can I read it? Can I read it? Well, you just shouldn't. This is because I said it. Yeah, that's what you said. That's what you said. And a lot of people that's in the, in, in the church now, they have just certain rules that they follow and they think it's doctrine. It's just the rule of that church. It's not doctrine. Stop acting like it's Bible. It's not Bible. It's bishop. Stop quoting bishop like he's scripture. He's bishop. He's not Bible. He's not the Word. Please stop. That's right. Bishop, go. Another bishop make another move. He go. Another bishop move. Let me tell you something. The Word of God stands forever. It changed not. It stands forever. Try the Spirit. Don't sit up there. And you can't. Wait, you got to do this. You got to do that. You got It's just rules. Stop making these rules doctrine. When it talks about scripture, I think it's uh, first. You don't have to go. It's uh, I think it's First Corinthians chapter uh, one, chapter ten. It's talking about we all speak the same thing. It ain't talking about the same rule. The same thing in the scripture. Stop telling everybody to speak the same thing. Well, I'm looking to see what rule you follow. No, I'm looking to see if you follow this. I'm looking to see if you follow the scripture, not the rule. I'm looking for scripture, not your rules. Your rules can change. Something can change. Scripture's not. Scripture don't change. Amen. Tell me, try the spirit. If I can't read it, don't tell me that this thing is doctrine. It's just a rule. It's just a rule. It's just something Bishop said. And Bishop gets so caught up in himself that he won't tell you it feels so good like he's an authority figure. The only authority spirit figure that we have in this is Jesus Christ. The chief shepherd of our soul. That's the only thing that the bishop that's above all the bishops that's in here. Amen. That's Jesus Christ. Yes. We have to stop esteeming people over the word. If anybody that's in the word, I don't care who he, who he is, should be able to be humble enough to come under the word. Nobody's above the word. Amen. That got everybody in here. Amen. Nobody's above the word. 
Nobody stop teaching rules and doctrine. It's just rules. Don't look at I'm looking down because certain rules we have certain certain things like this. You know, like you know, like some certain churches, like you gotta have a certain length when, when you wear a shirt. Amen. So it's so crazy. Well, say everybody walks in, they got a rule. Oh brother. Oh brother, brother, brother. It's not dark, it's just a rule. It's just a rule. Amen. Please try the spirit. To read, can I read it? Don't add to it when it says this. No, no, what does it say exactly? You're adding. You're adding. This is what makes people so hard to follow scripture because of a simple reason. This rule is so hard. Some of these rules are hard in the scripture. Some of these rules are crossway process. Jesus. What's the better word for that word? When you talk about the scripture, he said he's speaking especially plainly. He's speaking plainly to us. Everything else people just add into it. Read it, my brother, what it said. Believe not every spirit, but try the spirit whether they are of God. That's what we do. You gotta try the spirit. No matter who it is, no matter what they say, read your book. No matter what nobody say, I don't feel how good you feel. Read your book. In fact, the more you read, the more you know. The more you know, the more you understand. And the more you understand, the less you'll be deceived. Amen. The reason why they got deceived, maybe they just wasn't into the word like that. They wasn't searching the scriptures to see if they were so. They're not into the word like that. But it's giving us permission. It's giving us, it's like somebody, ah, Oh, you won't question me because I preach that. Even Jesus said, wait a minute, you heard what I said? Then what did Jesus say? Search the scriptures. Yes. Even Jesus put himself out there. He said, search the scriptures if you can see. Search the scriptures on what I said. When I was talking about Jesus, when I'm talking about salvation, you know what I'm saying? Go behind me, search the scriptures. Yes. Even Jesus, so we're above Jesus. We're above Jesus that we can't go behind nobody and say, hey man, what about this? If it ain't in the book, we can't sit up there and say it's doctrine. Amen. We have to try to spread by the by the word of God. Go ahead, my brother. Because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Many. <laughs> so we have to try everything, somebody. We just don't accept everything. Amen. That's why you need some. This is the whole purpose of y'all reading the scripture. The scriptures are spirit and truth. This is our life. That's why you got to open this book and start reading it for yourself. You got to constantly read it for yourself. Keep reading and keep reading. Like I said, read it until it reads you. Keep reading this book. Keep reading. Yes. You keep reading. Amen. That's how I'm going to work from Lord. Keep reading. Lord, I'm going to give you something. Amen. You keep reading. Just sit there and keep reading. And when you fall in love with the word. You get so used to it, you say, I need to talk, I need to hear God, I need to read the scripture. Whenever you fall in love with the word, it's not just enough, just that one time you keep coming back, you get addicted, you have that hunger and thirst, you just open the book, I got to keep reading. Something keep drawing me to this word, something got a hold of me, and I can't let it go. I got to read it. Amen. I'm living off it. I'm feeding off it. Survival is my comfort. It's my peace. It's my strength. It's my light. It's my guidance. It's everything to me. The word of God is everything. The truth is everything to me. But we have been one to try the spirit by spirit. Read my brother. Everybody know you the spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh to love God. And every spirit that confesses not that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. When you get the knowledge of the Son of God, that being the truth for him, this will show you, well, hey, this is what you, I know you read the scripture. I'm getting it. I'm getting it. Go ahead, read my brother. And this is the spirit of Antichrist. Oh. It's not, uh, this is against Christ. The spirit that they try to give you is a spirit against Christ. This is what they're against Christ. Remember I talked about how the devil is a copier? The Christ, the Christ, look at it, it's a copy. 
They got the Christ and got what? The Antichrist. Copy. Amen. He can't even be original. Why do we want to follow somebody who can't even get something on his own? God is the originator. Jesus said, I'm the beginning and the end. They're playing the maker. He just, they don't have none of that. Why do we want to follow something like that? Read it, my brother. And this is that spirit of Antichrist whereof ye have heard that it should come. And even, and even now, already, is it in the world. It's already here. It's already here. In fact, it's getting worse. It's already here. See, this was written on common. It's already here. It's getting wickeder and wickeder and evil. More evil and more evil. It's already here. Yeah. It's already here. Yeah. So we got to know the difference between what voice is speaking to us. Yeah. How you gonna know if you don't open your book? How you gonna know if you don't read? How you gonna know who's how you know who's speaking to you? Give me on um, um, uh, book of John chapter 50. Book of John, chapter, chapter 50. No, chapter 10. Chapter 10. I believe that verse, verse, verse 5. How you gonna know who's speaking to you? The only way you're gonna know if you get familiarized reading your book. Amen. If you open up the scripture, the more I'm, I'm gonna tell you something, let me be honest with you. I know you some may never ever uh, from this, but if you read the Bible, if you read these, these scriptures enough, it's almost like God got a rhythm. And it's like you can hear the tone. If you read the prophet, then you read another prophet. Like, it's like, it's, like, it's, it's almost like they're singing a song. Like, mm -hmm, it's your turn. And it's like a rhythm. It's like they're all on that same pace. And you start reading and get that. Well, it's like, oh, here, oh, oh, here comes John the Baptist. Same rhythm. Same thing. Same tune. It's like, no, Jesus is coming. Same. It's, it's like a, it's like a rhythm. Once you start reading, you start getting it. Yeah. But when somebody's out of tune, when they don't harmonize the scripture, you start realizing, wait a minute, hold on, something right. Now. That's right. Why? It doesn't have that rhythm. It doesn't go inside with the scriptures. It's a problem, my man, with what's going on. Read that, chapter 10, verse 5. And a stranger will they not follow. That's what happened. You heard a stranger. See, when you start reading the scripture, go up another verse. And when he put it for his own sheep, he goes before them, and the sheep follow him. He's given an example of a leader. He's given an example of a leader. See, if we start following the scripture, he goes before us. He'll lead us, he'll guide us, he'll show us the way. Amen. But if we keep reading, we'll know it's him. We know it's him. But when you don't pick up your book, how the last time you read your scripture? It was last year. So how you familiarize with who you're speaking to? Amen. Who you know is talking to you? If you haven't spent time with God, how you know who's talking to you? How you spend time by reading about him? Commune through his word. Talk to him through the scripture. He'll speak back to you. When you read the word, he start encouraging you. He start touching your heart. He does something to you. Y'all start having a communication going on. He speaks to you. You have a problem. You speak to him something. You read the word. Like, oh my God. God, you're speaking to me. What you're talking to me through the word. Amen. But if you're not familiarized with him, keep reading my brother. But they know his voice. They know his voice. When you read the word, you know it's for I know that's God. I have no doubt in my mind that's God speaking. That's God speaking. How you know? I heard his voice before. I turned the scriptures. I heard that same voice. I know that voice from anywhere. I know it. I recognize that voice. Let me tell you something. Something important about recognizing God's voice. If you do not know the God voice now, if you don't know God's voice now, you won't hear him call you from out the grave. If you're not familiar with the voice now, that when he calls and he comes, and then it says the dead shall rise first, you first rise first. If that's the case, you won't rise. Because why? You're not familiar. You listen to a stranger. You wait for the stranger to talk. 
But when Christ speaks, because you've been following his voice till you die, when you hear his voice, that's my Lord. Amen. I'm ready. Hallelujah. I've been listening to you all my life. I know it's you. Huh? I've been reading about you. I've been in your word. That's your voice. I know it. I know it from anything. Amen. I know it's you speaking. That's why the dead crack me right first. Because I've been reading about you. You've been a part of my life. I know your voice. Go ahead, my brother. And a stranger will they not follow. That's right. But we'll flee from him. Yeah. Hey, so, man, you're talking crazy. Why? You're not talking like Christ. I know that's not his voice. You're a stranger, like it's the kids who you say, stranger danger. Stranger danger. Don't like you said you as a kid. Don't speak of stranger. It's dangerous. Same thing here. Beware of strangers. Jesus. Especially doctors of devil. Amen. You know how said they were saying for being marriage? They speak everything against the truth. But the truth says it's best to marry than the word. You know, we know that has certain religions that you don't need to marry. And it's causing a lot of problems in that religion because the people are not married. And they have all these histories because they're not married and they're not permitted to marry. But they're going against scripture. Anytime you're going against scripture, you're going to get a mess. Yeah. They should be saying, that's not God's voice. I don't hear it. Why? It doesn't have the rhythm. It doesn't speak like the rest of them. They're not following the doctors. It's not the same thing. Yes. It's a stranger. It's a stranger. And now you're sitting there, you shouldn't be just sitting there entertaining. What did you do when you hear the stranger? And a stranger where they not follow, but we'll flee from them. Flee! Run from it! Because as long as you sit there, it's going to get in your system. Then the stranger is going to start sounding like God. And then it started to deceive me. <laughs> like I said, the devil sounds like a friend, but he's not your friend. He sounds like he's comforting. He's soothing you. It's just a seduction. Amen. He's seductive. He's deceiving. A stranger won't hear. But if you don't open the book, you won't know how he sounds. Some people just go to church and say, oh, they start making all this noise. And they don't even know that ain't Jesus speaking. I mean, they run out of church and you've been, you've been, what did he say? It just felt good. It just felt good. Feeling good and get you in the kingdom. Feeling right gets you in the kingdom. Feeling good and I'm right with Christ. I'm not like feeling good. See, it's, it's a funny thing about people when they follow God. They think that always the word comes, they're going to feel good. Sometimes the word going to make you mad. Sometimes the word going to hurt your feelings. That's true word. Anytime somebody preach, and every time they preach, it's always feel good. They ain't always preach the word because that comes from time. The word going to hurt you. The word going to break you. It's going to make you stop your tracks and consider what you're doing. And you're going to sit up and think about it. You're going to stop repenting before you know it. That's the real word. Amen. This isn't for exaltation. Also for reproof. They don't like that one. They don't like that one. They just like that feel good. Oh, yeah, that feel good. But when we talk about sin, oh, we get quiet. Oh, I don't like that I sin so much. Okay, read most of us. But they know not the voice of strangers. Mm -hmm. This parable spake, this parable spake Jesus unto them. But they understood not what things they were which he spake unto them. Then said Jesus unto them, Friend, friend, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. It's like, oh, wait a minute. Y'all don't get it? I'm just going to tell y'all straight up. I hold the door. I am the door. Amen. Everything you're doing, get come to me. I am the connection to God. I am connected to the kingdom. I am the door. Amen. You can't get in no other way. Amen. There's no other name under heaven. You can't go nowhere else except through Jesus. He said, I'm the 
door. I don't care who you bring. If it's not Christ, you're not going to the door. That's what he's saying. I'm the way. I'm the way. I'm the one that made the way. When there was no way. When we couldn't get to God. He's the way. He opened up the way that we can go to God and praise him without feeling guilty. Because why? He took the charge. He took the charge. That's why you can say, Lord, forgive me, because Christ died. You don't have to carry the burden. You can keep running, because Christ died. He's the door. He's the way. Go ahead, my brother. I am the door of the sheep. All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers. <laughs> Nobody like me. Nobody like me. Anything else, if it wasn't Christ, there's no comparison. Jesus says, no comparison. They ain't coming to bring life. They coming to steal life. I come to give life, which life is abundant. I ain't talking about money. I'm talking about living forever. Amen. Hey, my brother. But the sheep did not hear them. What you said? But the sheep did not hear them. <laughs> That's right. Go ahead. I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved. And shall go in and out and find pastor. That's what you say that. You say to Christ. You say to Christ. Amen. Listening to his voice. And you listen to his voice, you listen to the word. You cannot distinguish the voice if you don't know what the voice sounds like. Amen. The voice sounds like scripture. That's right. It's, it's, it's when it says it's it's plainly. It's plainly. If in the Paul said, I could have came with you excellent speech, excellent speech. I'm, I'm, I'm giving you a plain. Just imagine that. You know, that, that's, a, that's a humble man. That man said, I can speak elegant to you, but I'm going to bring the gospel down to look that anybody can understand. I can talk deep like all these other people and then be breaking the words and all this and stuff. I can do all this, but I'm going to give you the gospel plain. Let nobody have an excuse. Let's say God didn't talk to me. Nobody have an excuse. And say, I don't understand. Everybody's going to get it when he go before he leaves. Read my brother. The thief cometh not, but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life. That's it. I bring you life. Not just on to talk about on this earth. He's talking about on life forever. Yes, God, yes. Abundantly. You think you living life now? Your true abundance is when you're with Christ. When you live with God forever. That's abundant. You want to talk about the richest person in the world? It's the ones that's sitting next to God. Yes. You want to talk about some rich people? The people that's in heaven. Those are the rich people. They got everybody from poor to rich. If they make it to the kingdom, that's the real richness. That's the real rich people. Go ahead, brother. I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. He said, I can't give life and life abundantly. See, God is speaking. God is speaking. Amen. He's speaking so much. It's like nobody cannot miss it. He's speaking. He's dealing with all of us. He's dealing with everybody. Not just here. He's speaking out here. He's speaking everywhere. Give me on uh, Romans, Romans 1 and 20. Romans 1 and 20. God is speaking. Oh, give me. Verse 18. The wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness. God revealed. God continues to reveal itself. How do we have such a conscience and moral understanding between right and wrong? How do you know murder is wrong? This is a question they ask atheists. If you don't have a God, how do you know what's right and wrong? How do you, how can you say stealing is wrong? Who told you that? If you feel bad that you murdered somebody, why is you feel bad? There's no moral code. Something has to tell you that's wrong. Something has to reveal to you that's not right. Somewhere you got it, where did you get it from? They just say, I don't believe in God, but how do you know right from wrong? 
Why do you say that's wrong? And why do you say that right if you don't believe God? Why you just don't live everything? Your life the way you want to. Amen. Why do you have borders? Why do you have restrictions? Why would you say no? Why I won't do that? Why? Who told you it was wrong? Go ahead, my brother. For well, the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness. He's revealing himself. Un unrighteousness of men who hold the truth and unrighteousness. This is the problem right there. They know God. Remember I said what's the name? They know the truth. They have the truth. But what they do, they hold it in unrighteousness. Amen. They will not give God that credit. Pray, my brother. Because that which may be known of God is manifest in them. He manifests himself to them. He manifests us. He shows himself. He speaks to them through things, through nature, through things. He speaks, he speaks to him. Amen. He's like, how do the birds know what to do? Amen. Who taught the birds? Who taught the lion to hunt? Where did they get that from? How do they know what to do? Who told the birds to sing in the morning? Who told the birds to give God glory? Amen. In the morning, who told them? How? They must know something. He said, even the fowls of the air, God take care of them. The fathers of the air know who their Savior is, who is their creator. He knows who their creator is because he takes care of them. He feeds them. He said, even the father of the air know who God is. Amen. They know their creator. That's right. They know. They know where their food comes from. What should they say? They have to wait for the Lord to feed them. Yes. He waits to feed them. But yes, as men, Hold the truth and unrighteousness. Go ahead, my brother. But God has showed it unto them. Go ahead, my brother. For the invisible thing of him Amen. from the creation of the world are clearly seen. Clearly seen. We see it's God. Go ahead, my brother. Being understood by the things that are made. Even his eternal power see, is God here. We get not we get not the, the creature knows something Amen. about the creator. The things that are made, they know something. They know something. God created, it's, it's like somebody said, this world is like an art. Somebody has to be the artist. Somebody created, somebody, how do the, the trees know when to turn green? Amen. Why did it pick green? It has to have an author. Something had to create it. Something had to design it. Something had to paint it. It's God. You want to know his signature? His signature is us. He said, you made man his own image. Amen. We are his signature. No creature has that. No creature has that. He made man in his own image. He said, after I finish, let me sign it. This is me. Man, you represent me. Let me sign it. Go ahead, my brother. Being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and God is, so that they are without excuse. What you say? Because they are without excuse. Without no excuse. He's still speaking. Amen. He's still speaking. We can't pretend that we don't hear him. Like what's it? They don't want to retain what they heard. They don't want to hold on to it. God keep talking. God keep revealing. But let me listen to what the devil said. He keep talking. Amen. He's speaking to them. So when they stand before him, no excuse. Say, I've been talking to you. I've been calling your heart. I've been telling you, you need me. Yes. But you kept living as you was God. You kept worshiping the creature instead of the creator. You wasn't thinking about me. You wanted to live your life without me. I kept calling you to be saved by me. Amen. But you have no excuse. No one has no excuse. He's, he's always speaking. Plainly. Plainly. Drop down to uh, verse 28. And even as they did not like to retain God and their not. That's what happened. That's the problem. When God revealed them, they pushed it away. Amen. They pushed it away. They didn't want to accept it. They didn't want to protect. They didn't want to 
hold on to the information they receive. They pushed it away. I can't believe it. God gave them over to a reprobated mind. God said, okay, you can have it. You don't want me, you can have this. Amen. You don't want the truth? I'll let you have the lie. It's your choice. Who you want is your choice. I'm not going to force you. I'm not going to make you. Amen. I'm not going to force somebody. That's right. But if you want the devil, you can have it. You can have it. If you wanna, don't want to hold the truth, if you don't want me, I'm not going to force you. You got to come to want to surrender on your own. You got to want to submit on your own. If you don't want to come to me, I'm not a force for God like that. The devil forces with you. Call him a thief. Thief violate. A thief don't have no respect. But when it comes down to God, I say, okay, you make up your mind. You make up your mind. I'm not going to force you. It's your choice. And wherever you end up, it's your choice. Go ahead and read my brother. God gave them over to a reprobated mind to do those things which are not convenient. Mm -hmm. Being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness. This is what you love, man. Maliciousness. You want it? You can have it. You can have it. Amen. If you want all these desires that's fleshly, you can have it. Jesus. I'm not going to force you. Whosoever will, let them come. Yes. Amen. If you have a desire, I'm here and the door is open. I hold that door open for you. Long enough. You, the door is open. It's your choice whether you want to go in or out. If you, it's your choice whether to listen to the stranger or you want to listen to the shepherd, the good shepherd. It's your choice. Who you want to need you? For the rest of your life, who you want to lead you? He said, I'm going to help before them. Who you want to lead you? Who you want before you? It's your choice. Bring on, my brother. Full of envy, murder, deceit, deceit, malice, whisperers, bite biters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, and villains of evil things. Disobedience to him. He let him have it. If that's what you love, I'm going to let you have it. He said, because you love not the truth. I'm going to give you what you want. I'm not going to fight you. It's your desire to want to be with me. How many force? You know, you know, some people oh, I got to go to church. I'm not forcing you. You got to want to come to the house. You got to want to be amongst the people of God. You got to want to pray. You got to want to read your church. It's not, I'm not forcing you. You got to have that desire on your own. Oh, yes. It's got to come from you. Nobody can't coach you to come on. No, you got to have that own thing on your own. Nobody can't force you to do nothing. Go ahead, my brother, read it. Without understanding, common and breakers. Without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful, who knowing the judgment of God? What does that? Wait, wait. All these things He gave them to, over to, He let them have. It. Amen. But there's a key word. What you said? Who knowing the judgment? They of know God? from something God gave them some understanding. They know. They know God is a judge. They know something is authority figure something over something somewhere. Knowing the judgment of God. Go ahead, my mother. Who know the judgment of God that they which commit such things are worthy of death. Not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. And remember, they did not retain God. Amen. Every time God was speaking, every time God was revealing, they did not want to teach that knowledge. And God keep revealing himself to him. Amen. Keep reading first, uh, chapter 2. Therefore, that are inexcusable. You have no excuse. Man. You have no excuse. Amen. God said, I reveal myself to you. You have no excuse. 
You have no excuse. You know something. I spoke to you. You know something. Read on, my brother. Therefore, that art is inexcusable, O oh man, who forever that art that judges. For wherein that judges another, that condemneth that self. Maybe, maybe that's the problem. You don't hear God because you're looking at God, looking at somebody else talking to you. Amen. Not looking at yourself. Maybe you're paying attention to their wrong and not paying attention to true or wrong, what God is speaking to you. Maybe that's why you don't hear God. You're trying to say, God, talk to him. Speak to him about that. Speak to him about that. He's speaking to you. Amen. This is between you and God. Nobody else. This is between you and God. Is that the reason why you can't hear him? Because you're trying to get him to talk to them? He's talking to you. Don't worry about nobody else. Amen. Look at yourself. Stop judging them. Talk to, talk to yourself. Get, get the beat. Get, get, get out your mind first. Amen. Get out your mind first. Yes. Work on yourself. Go ahead, my brother. But now that judges, you are the same thing. Same, you doing the same thing? I don't say you, you know what's wrong. But you're doing the same thing, but you want God to correct their wrong. Keep reading, my brother. But we are sure that the judgment of God is according to truth against them which commit such things. And thankest thou this, O man, that judges them which do such things, and do it the same, that thou shalt escape the judgment of God. You think you're going to escape too? You think you're going to ease by too? You think he only speaking to the old people out there not speaking to us? He's not speaking just to them, he's speaking to us also. The only difference, the people in the world and us, he speaks to us like his children. We just show him, we're the children of God. So he talks to us, he, talks to us. he may get mad with them, but he has a different kind of situation going on with us. Amen. He talks to us like his children. His children doing something wrong. He takes it personal. It's his children. Go ahead, bro. Our despisers, the riches of his goodness, and forbearing and long suffering. See, this is what the reason why God has not condemned so many people in the world. This scripture right here, what it say, brother? Despisers, the riches of his goodness, his goodness. and forbearing. We all received that when we were out there. Yes. We received his goodness. And what else we receive from him? Not knowing that the goodness of God lead us to repentance. That's how we all, a lot of us got here. Because we all know God was good. Amen. He kept speaking to us and stuff. He kept speaking and he waited. He allowed us to mess up and he's still waiting for us. And that's his goodness. That's why we come here and we love him. Because that's how good he is. He could have just stopped and let us die in our sin, but he kept giving us chance after chance after chance, long suffering. And it brought goodness and it led us to come to repentance. That's what it is. We have to start listening to God voice more. Open up your book. Amen. Open up your book. Sometimes you get discouraged and, and you, you, you gotta keep reading. You gotta keep reading. No matter how you do, you gotta keep reading. These words gotta go through you, go with you every part of your life. Every part of your life, it gotta go with you. Amen. Every portion of your life, you got God words have to go with you. Whatever you see, you have your blessed days, your days you feel alone. It goes with you. Every part of your life, God words have to go with you. There is no special occasion. God words all the time. Amen. All the time. When I don't feel like it, when I'm looking for, I don't have, I don't have the mind, but I'm just still seeking Him. Yes, Lord. To His word. Yes. That's how we do it. That's how we don't get off track. So this is what I want to encourage y'all. Just continue to look to God for his word. Amen. Don't let the devil keep speaking to you. God, word, God speak louder than the devil. Listen to him. Listen to him. Amen. And so I just want to just encourage you on that. And when I was thinking to myself, you know, you know, I thank God for his word. Even when you feel discouraged, and you make it off track. He still bring the word to you. Amen. He still bring the word to you. 
when you get lost, he'll still bring that word to you. That's how his word is. His word will come get you. He'll come get you. That's why there's a thing about the word. It doesn't leave you alone just like that. It stays with you. You just easily don't walk away and just say, I don't understand. It's just something about the word. It does something to you when it gets in you. It changes you. It shapes you. It makes you think differently. Your mind gets renewed. You start thinking differently what you used to think. You start loving differently. You start treating people differently because of the word. Amen. It's the word of God. Give me the last. We're going to read one more scripture. I'm going to tell you this. One more scripture. Oh. It's in Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 30. Isaiah chapter 30. Let's see here. It's Isaiah, okay. Isaiah chapter 30, beginning at verse 18. Remember, I talk about the goodness of God. And therefore, will the Lord wait. Once again, that's it. He waited. He waited for us. He was merciful. He didn't let us die out there. We thought we were going to die. We, that's right. we should have died. But because he was so merciful, because of his goodness, that's what goodness means. He was good when we wasn't good. Read my mother. Therefore will the Lord wait that he may be gracious unto you and therefore will he be exalted, that he may have mercy on, upon you. For the Lord is a God of judgment. Is a God of judgment? Blessed are all they that wait for him. You know, let me tell you this, you know. I'm going to tell you, I gave a testimony. I, I thank God for the scripture. You about to read this. You know, there was a time, um, I, I, some years before, and that, when I mean I say the devil in the field, it's like uh, one of the tremendous times, and I often say this, this is so true because I never ever felt a blow like this before. It's like when my mother passed, that was a tremendous blow. I'm, I, I'm, a, I'm a person, I'm a family person. I love family. That's just how I was raised. I'm always around family. I was concerned about it. I always was taught, go help, uh, go help your great aunt. My, my great aunt was still living. I had to go help, stay where I was helping. Go help my my, uh, my great grandma was still living. Go my great grandma's house. And I got to help them, and they taught me that to always help family. And when my mom died, one of the things the devil used, he used people that I thought would be more church and spiritual. And most of those people, to be honest with you, was a heartbreaking thing at that time. And I felt the blow of the devil and he hurt me so bad. And I thank God, I mean, there was only a few. I wish I could say many, but God know what I needed. He had a few people out of nowhere. Just what I mean by when somebody called you, and your phone didn't ring. And you sitting at home, you laying in the bed just trying to deal with stuff. And you just laying there, and people, because they called me, say, she said, get out that bed. She said, get out that bed. I said, yeah, yeah. He said, I knew you didn't bed. get out that bed. And so I think I know it. And it was people of God. One I once on a call. They didn't even know. They just came to call me and heard me. And that was so much encouragement for me. Yes. You know. You know. You know. I, I don't know, but I'm just gonna leave him his name out. He turned around and he know God. God know what you need to hear. Brother turned around saying, "I love you." Right at the time when it was the worst, and I felt. 
tell that was God speaking. You tell me I love you. I love you. Because I was looking for love, like they say, in the wrong place. Supposed to be the right place. We people of God. We are the epitome. We are the capital of love. When he said the capital, we are the capital of love. We are the epistles of love. We, we are the book of love. He said, you shall know them by the love, by you love one another. And I was just sitting there and, and, and the people that I was like and thinking were spiritual, they wasn't being spiritual. I mean, they said some hurtful things. I was at my Lord's alone. Like one of them said, you should bring God over your mouth. That was some serious blows, man. That was some serious blows. Because me and my mom was on the, my mom, my mom been hurt. And so, at her later years, because so many, she's a very nice person. But when she got hurt so much, she shut down. She stopped really hugging her kids anymore. She even stopped saying, I love you. So at the end of the years, we was kind of getting good when she's about to pass away. Before it can happen, she died. So that left a big hole, like we were still talking. And the devil used that vehicle to hit me hard, real hard. Not long track, I couldn't even focus. And I was just saying, I just don't want to deal with that. You know, it's not to the fact that I want to leave God just didn't want to deal with church. I, I didn't, I, it's not that I, I still want to deal with God. I just didn't want to deal with church. That's when I learned there's a difference between people that just go to church and children of God. Please get the difference. We confuse the two. These are just people go to the building and go home. But the people of God, let me tell you the difference. The people of God can do the same thing. They can wrong you. The, the people at the church can wrong you. The people at the church wrong you, keep going. The people of God say, you know what, I'm sorry about that. I was wrong. That's the truth of God. Big difference. I learned that a long time ago. I used to get upset with people. And I used to tell them, they used to talk about the church. Tell church, church, church. I said, don't talk about church like that. And I start saying, yeah, talk about them church people. You ain't talking about God's children. Talk about them children. God, I'm going to help you. I'm going to give you a few words. But when it comes down to God, people, there's something different. Something different. But like I said, I got to the point where I didn't just want to deal with church. And it was just happening more over. More over. But this scripture right here, verse 19. But if people shall dwell in Zion and Jerusalem, thou shalt weep. No more. No more weeping. Amen. He will be very I was no more weeping. God came and encouraged me. Amen. Gave me strength. Amen. I was on the edge. I was about to walk off the cliff. But something happened. Read my brother. He will be very gracious unto thee. Mm -hmm. And the boss of that cry. That's what I heard. He heard my voice and my cry. When he shall hear it, he will answer thee. Hmm. Heard my prayer. Yes. He answered my prayer. Yes. He gave me strength. Yes. He gave me hope again. Thank you. Hallelujah. Yes. He gave me hope again. Yes. When I want to give up, he gave me hope again. Yes. Amen. Read it, my brother. And though the Lord give you the bread of adversity. Even though I have to go through the suffering. Even I have to go through the ones that persecute me and I thought they're supposed to love me. He did something. Keep reading, my brother. And the water of affliction. Had to drink that. He was afflicted. What about what Christ did? Did he suffer? And it wasn't his fault? Well, didn't they do him wrong? Amen. But he kept on the will of God. He didn't stop serving. He went all the way with the suffering to the cross. He completed the task. Live for God. Amen. Go ahead, my brother. Yet shall not that 
that teacher be removed into a corner anymore. And <laughs> so, go ahead, my brother. But that I shall see that teacher. Put the dog open the door. <laughs> Pray, my brother, say, no more weeping. Gracious. And he said, the very gracious unto thee. And what did he say? Verse 19. Verse 19. For the people shall dwell in Zion mm -hmm. at Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. Thou shalt weep no more. Mm -hmm. He will be very gracious unto thee at the cross of thy cry. Mm -hmm. When he shall hear it, he will answer thee. That's it. Amen. That's what's saying. He not only heard my cry, he answered. Yes, yes. This is what kept me. He kept me because he didn't let me go. Amen. He kept me because he didn't let me go. Amen. This is why I'm still here. Yes, God's a keeper. Yes, Amen. You hear me? God's a keeper. We can't keep ourselves so well. God's a keeper. How to testify? God's a keeper. Our strength is found in our weakness. God's a keeper. God kept me. That's the reason why I'm still here. That's why I'm still here. Keep reading, my brother. Go ahead. And though the Lord give you the bread of adversity mm -hmm. and the water of affliction, yet shall not that teachers be removed into a corner in a moment, but mm -hmm. that eyes shall see that teachers. You will see God. God gonna open up your understanding. You will see God. Amen. Go ahead, my brother. And that ear shall hear a word behind thee. That's Amen. what it was. I was about to go off the cliff, but I heard something behind me. Before I could jump off, before I got lost, I heard a voice behind me. And what did he do? This is the way. He said, this is the way. You're going the wrong way. This is the way. Why is the, the voice you behind me? It's telling me I'm going the wrong way. This is the way. This is the way. Yes. Yes. Amen. This is the way right here. Yes. That's the wrong way. Don't lean on them. Lean on me. This is the way. Stop trusting in them. Trust in me. How you trust in me? Jesus. Cursed be the man that trusts flesh, trusted in me. Our relationship to be all the time. Read my brother. This is the way. Walk ye in it. When you turn to the right hand, and when you turn to the left. He said, This is the way. He showed me the direction to get back on track. He saved me if it wasn't for God and his voice. See, when you, you thank God, you can still hear his voice. Yeah. When trouble comes, thank the Lord, I can still hear you. Yeah. Don't let your troubles be louder than God. Listen for the voice of God in your afflictions, in your disappointments. When people have turned their back on you, listen to the voice of God. Yeah. That's what you seem to be listening to. He will guide you. He will keep you. It's God that does the keeping. Listen to the voice. That's the voice. It never steals you wrong. Yeah. It never lets you go so far straight. You think you'll fall away. But he's right there calling you by name. I love you. Come back. I want you back in my life. I want you to be with me. Keep serving. Continue to be my child. So don't worry about what people say. Don't worry about people talk about you. No matter how what people talk, uh, how they say things about you. That's all I'm worried I'm, I'm not paying attention to what they say in their voice. I'm going to hear God's voice. Out of all this confusion and all this foolishness, because when you start hearing God's voice, He brings you peace. He brings you peace. Where everybody's, you heard what he said? You know how many times I heard they're about to fire you? You know how many times you're not going to have a job? I was, what did you say, God? I still got a job. But they said, I'm listening to you, your voice. Amen. That's why I'm so calm. You ain't worried about that? I'm going to tell you a story. There's a guy coming to work, and they say, oh, you see 
that guy you're training? Oh, he about to take your place. I said, okay. I said, really? I'm going to train him the best way I can. Because God must got something for me and I'm going to believe him. I'm going to trust him. I'm not going to act evil. I'm going to let him know everything I know. If I'm out of the job, God got something for me. So I trained him the best way to know. I was kept showing him. He didn't want to listen. And I was trying to show him why he wanted to show him. But I still was training him. I said, well, if you're going to fire me, Lord, I'm, let me, if you fire me, let me fire doing your will. So he quit. Still got my job. I listen to the voice of God. See, if I listen to the devil, oh, I'll train him to do nothing. Let him mess up and get fired. He's trying to get your job. Don't tell him anything. I listen to God. He got to be, he go now. I'm standing because God's voice said something different. In the midst of chaos, listen to God's voice. When you have confusion and people and everything else telling you stuff, listen to God. God, let me hear you. I don't want to hear what y'all talking about. Y'all talking stupid. Talking, what you say, God? Let me listen to your voice. Or oh, they still talking. Let me, let me listen to your voice. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for blessing. I listen to your voice. This is God's voice right here. This is God's voice. Like, 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 I, 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 I love when the preacher said, he said, when you open this, you open his lips. He's speaking to you. He's saying something about you and your situation, about life itself. It's in here. It's in here. Listen to him. Talk to you. Tell the devil, no, I don't want to hear what you got to say anymore. I want to hear God's voice. Amen. Let your voice guide me. Guide me the rest of my life. That's the important thing. Always listen to God's voice. Don't listen to what the devil tell you. Sometimes people... Talk like the devil, but they act like God. Remember, I say, the, uh, Satan transformed himself into an angel. Like, sometimes they, they act like it, but they're not. But you won't know the difference because you read the book. The book going to show you. It's going to show you, you, yourself, and the people around you. Listen to the word, it will guide you. That's God's voice. May God continue to bless y'all and keep y'all. Be encouraged. May God continue always to bless everyone that's in the room. I hope everyone been blessed by the word of God. Amen. Continue to hold on to God. Continue to trust God. There's no other voice than Him. Amen. Amen.